Hi everybody, hi guys. Hi ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well. Hey, it's summer, everybody's happy, right? <laughs> it's summer here on this hemisphere. Um, Thank you for coming back, thank you for tuning in. Um, I appreciate everything you guys do for me. Um, I say us because it's my family too. You guys help out my entire family with your prayers, with your views, with your likes. Thank you so much. And your comments, beautiful comments and words of encouragement. They mean a lot to me. They mean a lot to me. The trolls are dwindling. I used to get so many, many trolls. Now they're they're dwindling. I appreciate you guys unsubscribing and resubscribing and all that you've done. Appreciate that. Just make sure you're still subscribed because some people don't get notifications. Even they have notifications and they tell me that they are being still unsubscribed from me. So if you can do that, subscribe and hit the like button. That helps me stay in, in your um, suggested and liked videos that will pop up every time I post one. And it helps get my work out there. And I really appreciate you guys doing all that you do for me. Thank you. So this is Tasa that I did on Rishi Sunak, and he is the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. And therefore, today we're going to 10 Downing Street, the Prime Minister's residence in London, UK, London, England. Now, the true king of that castle is Larry. Larry has been there, has lived there through five Prime Ministers and two monarchs, Queen Elizabeth and now Charles. And he's outlasted all those other prime ministers. And he's still there. And he might see a sixth, I think, right? Six, five or six. Well, I've already lost count. But Larry knows what's going on. And he's the bravest, cutest guy there. So here he is, one of the most famous cats in the country. It's Larry the cat. He's the chief mouser here at number 10 Downing Street where the Prime Minister lives. He's been here for more than 10 years now and apparently this is his favourite spot where he likes to have a bit of a snooze just outside number 10. <laughs> and he's not waking up despite all the noises around here in central London. He's having a good old nap there. Larry? Larry? Not interested. <laughs> There we go. Larry's awake now. Hey Larry, you alright buddy? Must be uh, time for lunch. Thank you for indulging me. Now on a serious note, <laughs> let's get to La Taza. Thank you guys. It was a very complicated Taza. It took me a while to understand it. And I'll tell you why. I realized it at the end after I finished reading it. Why? Almost finished reading it. Why it was so difficult. It's a very lonely Tasa. He's like alone. He's alone. A very lonely Tasa. And I did it several times. And I only got one or two figurines. I didn't paint much. Like um, my mom used to say and my tia, no pinto na la taza. And they would redo it again. This taza didn't paint anything. And then they redid it again. So I had to do that for Rishi. Very confusing taza. So usually the first taza, this is the first taza that I do for him. So usually the first taza is the worst. Because the taza is like a warning. It's like a warning. If you do tazas regularly, you get a lot of good things popping up. But the first time you ever do a taza, if... Let's say you're having health issues, boom, it'll pop up because it's important, right? And it's urgent. If you're having emotional issues, that'll pop up. Money issues will pop up. That sort of thing pops up. Everything warning will pop up the first tasa. Later on, you start getting more, you know, romance and all that and, you know, vacations. So hopefully is that with this tasa. This is the first one that I do for him for Rishi. And it was not a great tasa for him. And um, I don't, I, I think I'm going to be very cold about it because I don't understand the laws in the UK. And whenever I start speculating, I get it wrong because your system of government is so different from ours that if I veer off in thinking it's like ours here, I'll get it wrong. So I'm just going to tell you what I see exactly. 
For example, for Boris Johnson, I thought he was going to lose the election. And I did readings and I said he would not win because I saw him leaving. I saw him leaving and leaving and leaving. I, I even said he's leaving like a couple times. I don't understand that. Like he's leaving several times. What the, the heck does that mean? Is he going to gonna get him out of the UK? I should have left that like that because I um, now we know that he got kicked out as prime minister. He was removed and he was removed from the house from parliament. He was removed from the House of Commons. So it's that sort of thing. I don't understand the laws there, but I'm just going to tell you what I see here. And it's not great, but you guys are going to be OK. You guys are going to be OK. But th there's a lot of turmoil that will be happening in the UK. So, you know, strap on, hold on to your seatbelts. And um, it's not pretty, but we went through a lot here, too. And look at us. We're fine. So it's that sort of thing. Okay, so here he is. Um, he's working very hard. He is. He, he's trying to figure things out. I saw on the news that, you know, he can't relate to people, that he's not like the common man because he's like a billionaire. Look at it right here. He's all alone. A person that's all alone and he feels alone and he has papers in the air. I think this is money that he's counting on coming in, but it's so far away. It's so far away. It may not get to him. Or plans or strategies that he has for money to come in. It may not happen while he while he's prime minister. He has papers on his mind. So he's working very hard. Perhaps to pass bills. To strategize economically. The whole world. The whole world. Not just you guys. Everyone is going through tough times now. There's a lot of. <sighs> defracturing of structures. And it's causing domino effects. And with the war, with Putin being just a complete jerk, everyone, well, not everyone, but there were so many countries dependent on him. It's like, and then Brexit. Now you can't uh, export things without people having to pay taxes, so they might choose a cheaper option. And now you guys there in the UK cannot import because the same thing, the, the, the food is high. You have to pay taxes. Now it's so much higher than it was before. <sighs> Um, but anyway, here we go. That's what I see. It's like he feels like everyone's blaming me for the problems of the world. And I'm trying very hard and it's not my fault. And he feels like he has no support. Like they're letting him sink. They're not throwing him a life of a vest. They're not helping him. Um, and he feels like I'm not going to be able to do this alone. This is his tasa. This is what I see here. That is going to cause him emotional pain, perhaps even depression, and physical ailments. I see something happening with his leg. I don't know. These guys always have like leg issues. Is it the high blood pressure causing them clog arteries? I don't know. Broken leg. I don't know. Here he has some issue with his leg. And he's going to have to t seek treatment for it. Funny enough. I did a, a that on Boris one time. I think it was Boris. I did a that on somebody from the UK. And Queen Elizabeth came out with some sort of leg issue. And years later. When she passed away they were saying. They said old age was the cause of death. But some people think it was um, bone cancer. In one of her legs. Now I'm not saying he has bone cancer. I don't know what it is. I don't know if he broke. Will, will, I don't know if he will be breaking his leg. He has an injury in his leg. Tendons, knees, something. Or it's some something with his artery. I don't know. But he's going to have to seek treatment for that. And he goes to this two-tone dark building. Large building. His two-tone brown or gray or... Light brown, dark brown, dark gray, light gray, or brown and gray tall building that he's going to have to go to. And let me tell, I have it here written here. So Rashid Sunak 
Um, he was born May 12, 1980. He's extremely young. He's 43 years old and he's the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. So I had to look it up. He has two daughters, Krishna, and I cannot pronounce the other little girl's name. I'm sorry, I'm not going to butcher it. Um, I'm not going to butcher it. He, he has two daughters. I don't know what's going to happen, but one of his daughters is going to go missing. She's going to go missing, but she's going to be okay, and they will find her later on. But that's going to come out on the news. And she might be heading to that building. Maybe she she looks up and realizes, oh, my dad goes to this building and will walk to the building or something. But something's going to happen where she's going to, you know, traverse and get confused. And ooh, Cooper has to go out, you guys. I'm sorry. Hold on. Okay, so what was I saying? So one of the girls is going to go missing at some point. Here's another building that he goes to. There's another gentleman there. Oh, I think these are government buildings because I see here like glass doors and stuff. It might be 10 Downing, but it's light. I don't know. 10 Downing is like a dark building, right? I don't know. Some, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Uh, another building that he goes to. And people are walking away from him in that building. More people leaving and walking away. Now, here, here's what I want to say about that. That's this that's one. So here is this heavy set gentleman. Here is. A lady that is leaving with this heavy set gentleman, and here's like some sort of military person leaving with them. They're moving all moving away from him from Rashi. Everyone's turning their backs on him. I think these are people that are in the Labour Party. I don't think these are people in his party. I think this person here, leaving, turning his back on him and going into this building, is from his party, the Tories. But these three people, no. I don't think they're from his party. I think they're from the Labour. And they're just turning their backs, com backs completely on these people. And walking away. And they're traveling out of the UK for to do something. There's going to be an issue, you guys. There's going to be an issue. There's going to be a problem going on in the UK. And when I read this, let, let me let you in a little bit on my train of thought. Ocean. So here's the United Kingdom, like London and, and all that. But here is another territory of the UK in the ocean. I wonder if this is Gibraltar, because it's like a rock in the middle here. It's like an island there in the middle. And I know the UK has many islands. But this one is like south of the UK here. I think there might be an issue, some a, a, a problem in Gibraltar. I don't know what, but it's going to come out on the news and it's going to require people to go try and solve it. It might be economical. Most likely it's an economical issue there. And that problem with Gibraltar may bring, may cause problems at home or may start a domino effect of problems at home. You know what I mean? You see that like water all around this area here belonging to this other territory? So, okay, here's the hard part here. 
so these people that are leaving their issue with what I think is Gibraltar, maybe another island. I don't, I don't know. Like I always say, you know, oh my God, uh, I, I, I think it's it is Gibraltar. Maybe com commerce issue or something like that. Um, it's either going to cause more economical issues in the UK, or it'll start a domino effect of other issues in the UK that will lead to strikes and protest and this is very similar to our january 6th here not as bad not as bad as ours but i mean at least i don't think it's as bad as ours but it's pretty bad and here is blood shed over money in government and people protesting there will be blood there too my brothers and sisters in the UK I know that you guys that watch my channel are not like that so I'm not that worried about you I'm, I'm more worried about your nerves watching the news but please don't get involved in that either don't get involved in that there will be some bloodshed there during this time of um, upheaval. Here in the United States, I mean, we were at each other's throats. Democrats and Republicans were at each other's throats. The division here with Prigozhin and Putin and Donald Trump, the what they sown here, they've torn us apart. They have shredded us, pinned us against each other. Just remember that. Don't let that happen to you. Here, I don't want you to be like the Fratelli brothers from the Goonies killing each other over the pepperoni. Because that's how we are here. It's so undignified. That That's how we are here, Americans. We, we, we are just at each other's throats. And I hope that that doesn't happen there to you. But there will be some upheaval. Here's Rashi. Here's Rashi again. And... You guys will tell me, will let me know who this is. But there's a gentleman who it was very, very close to him, who he trusts implicitly, who has like some sort of hunchback or bad posture, who will be turning his back on him. Maybe it's part of his team. Maybe it's part of his cabinet. Maybe he's, uh, Rashi is this gentleman's protege. I do I can't tell you why but this gentleman not only is he sad he also has like a issue with his back osteoporosis he's either hunchback has uh, sc scoliosis I, I don't know you guys there in the UK will let me know here's the blood over money spilling into this government building here's Rashi alone again and here's this gentleman turning his back on him. Here's Rashid talking to a lady. He has, I don't know if that's his wife, maybe, I don't know. There's one lady that he talks to that he he kind of can rely on. But he's mostly all alone. Um, and they're probably going to blame everything on him, those Tories. They're going to blame everything on this guy. And they're going to let him sink. They're going to throw him to the wolves. They're going to throw him to the wolves. And I see desolate. I see like um, loneliness in the UK. I think there will be an uh, outflux of people leaving the UK. There will be many people leaving the UK. Going to other countries. I know that you guys, because I lived abroad for many years, and I know that in the UK, let's say you buy a home, and you get, let's say you get a 3% interest rate on the purchase of your home, which you have to pay. You only get that for five years, let's say, and then it fluctuates. If the interest rate goes lower, your interest rate goes low. But if it gets higher, you stuck paying a higher interest rate. 
on your home. Here in the United States, it's not like that. Once you buy a home, you stick to the interest rate. That's it. Even if it takes you 30, 40 years to pay your house, you only pay that amount of interest. That's not the case with in the UK. So now that there's so much inflation over there, how are people going to pay? keep paying their mortgages? How are people going to be able to afford all this? And all the um, price increase on food because of Brexit. Now everything that they buy, they have to pay taxes on because they're not part of the EU anymore. So it's very hard and I see a lot of loneliness there and I see people leaving the UK, flying, getting out. Many, many people getting out. I almost feel bad for this guy. I know he, he he's like a billionaire and he's telling poor people to stick it out while he's like a billionaire. That doesn't, you know, rub anybody the right way. But dang, it's a lot. I have to keep doing more tasas on people in the UK. You guys in the UK, let me know who else. I'll do more on Rashi. This is the first one. But you guys can suggest other people there in the UK that can affect that that their lives. Um, that they're so involved in government that things in their lives will show up that affect you. So I need someone close to government. So that we can see what's going on. And at the bottom of the cup here, I see a bunch of different countries, people leaving. That's what I'm saying. It looks lonely and then a bunch of different countries at the bottom. And an issue over here where, which a place that I think it's Gibraltar. We'll know. We'll know if I'm right or wrong on that one. But I wanted to get to tell you guys um, a few things. Um... I had a, this is a while back, I've never ever had a dream, really, with the royal family. Never. And about a month and a half ago, I had a dream with uh, William, Prince William. Um, I don't know why, I never, I, I don't really, I, like, I liked Queen Elizabeth because she had been there for so long. She loves animals, horses and dogs and everything. So was, I felt like a fondness with her. And I, I love old, older people. But I'm not really like I wasn't in like a into Charles, Camilla, uh, William, Kate, uh, Harry, Megan. Like I don't. That to me sounds like soap opera stuff. Um, so I don't like that, and I don't want to do readings on that. But for some reason, I had a dream with William. You know, he's a cancer. I'm a cancer too. So maybe I'm picking up um like water sign issue things. I didn't like it at all. I hope that he's okay and everything will be okay with his family. Um, so the, my dream was that we were like in a, a beautiful hotel and I, I, I think I was at the hotel while he and his family were there and I never saw Kate and one of the boys. It's been so long. I should have written it down and now I don't know which boy, but I know that William was with, uh, his daughter, Charlotte and one of the boys. I, I don't know if it was the older one or the little one. I can't remember. But it was it was William, the little girl, and one of the boys. No Catherine, and one of the little boys missing. And I did not like that dream because the hotel filled up with water. There was water everywhere. And he couldn't find anywhere to stay with his kids. And he was worried about his kids. And so I saw them trying to worry, whatever. You know, this is a dream. And I'm like trying to help him with the kids. And I'm like taking the little girl and then you guys are going to be okay. Come over here on this side. And when we got to that side, it was even more full of water. Then we went to another side, more water coming out to me. Water and dream signifies depression and sadness and grief. So I did not like that dream. It was just, um, it made, it made me panic the dream. And then uh, we decided to go. I said, why don't we go back up? And he goes, yeah, let's go back up to the lobby again. And I go to the lobby and there was no one in the lobby. And I'm looking for keys and stuff to get out, to get to the elevator. And I grabbed one of the keys that said to get an exit key, an elevator exit key. And I said, I think you guys need to find another place to stay. This place is, you have children. You shouldn't be staying here. Go to go somewhere else. You want me to help you find another place? And he shows me a key, 
like an old style key, exact replica of the one I had. And he goes, I have the key too. And I said, Hey, look at you. You you you're a prince. Are you gonna have you, those are the keys? That that's like symbolic. That's like the key to the kingdom. In the dream, and he smiled, and he said, Yeah, yeah. And he kind of smiled and said, Yeah. And so they got on an on an elevator, and like that was like the end of the dream. That everybody was fine after that. But what I didn't like is that I didn't see his wife or one of the other kids. I hope they're gonna be okay. Nothing happens to them. If I keep getting another dream like that, I'll then I'll do a tasa on them just to make sure they're okay. I don't want to know about, you know, butt issues and who's divorcing, like genitalia issues. That don't interest me on anybody. I don't like that. But if health issues on celebrities, I, I probably will do a tasa. I just don't like them. Um, if it's like legal, severe legal abuse issues like that. I did one on Andrew because of his legal abuse issues that he was... Uh, that he got sued for and if i keep having these you know dreams on william and his family then i'll do a one on him but so far i haven't had it again so i hope that that everyone there's okay but no that that's it on the united kingdom for now that's it on the united kingdom for now please you guys in the uk you guys are amazing in in, in ireland too in in ireland but you guys over there in the UK are amazing. You guys have been with me from day one. From day one. Please, you know, if you have any suggestions on another person that I could do a reading on so we could get more of an idea um, on the economy and government and what's going to be happening just besides Rishi, uh, please let me know. Put it down in the comments. Okay, thank you so, so much. Big hugs. <laughs> and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.